You know, sometimes you might have a rummage in your cupboard at home and then at the back you find a chocolate bar that's been there for a few months. You get it out and you find this kind of white powder on it. You don't know what that white stuff is. I don't have a clue what it is, if I'm being honest with you. So don't eat it. Yeah, I, I, I personally wouldn't. As consumers, we're wary of the white stuff. So what is it and should we be worried? To find out, I'm off to an industrial estate on the outskirts of Hamburg in Germany. No, I thought well, I was coming to a chocolate factory, but look at this place, it's more like NASA. This space age lab has been contracted by a global food company to find out more about this unsightly stuff plaguing our chocolate. Hi there, I'm Jim. Hi, I'm Stefan. Nice to meet you. This place is colossal. Do you want to see it? Yes, please. Yeah, okay. please come with me. Dr. Stefan Roth is using cutting edge technology to see what happens at a molecular level when the white stuff forms. Wow, look at this. Now, this is properly space age. What kind of machine is this? Basically, this is a big X ray microscope. It looks massive. It's got to be sort of like three or four meters long. Yes, the total X ray machine is 2.3 kilometers in circumference. 2.3 kilometers. Indeed. This is the largest X ray machine in the world. The vast X ray machine spans several buildings via a network of tunnels and is normally used for molecular research into space-age materials, energy sources and medicine. Its beams are so powerful, it can examine structures to the scale of a billionth of a metre. So is this what they use on the Death Star? Oh, no, definitely not. <laughs> In the past, confectionery companies relied on scanning electron microscopes, which could only tell them so much. So that is the surface of a chocolate bar. Indeed. It looks like the surface of the moon. You've got these smooth areas with cracks in, then you've got these really sort of spiny projections. Basically, this is the whitish stuff we have seen on a chocolate bar. As it looks like a flower, it is called fat bloom. Fat bloom? Indeed. So what causes, then, the fat to, to separate from the rest of the chocolate? It's the temperature. Right, so your central heating, your temperature goes up exactly. and down, winter and summer, all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and that affects the fat. Exactly. Crystalline fat melts and the fat can start moving. Where the cracks... So I can see a crack from here, look. Yes, indeed. This is where the fat can uh, go into and then is uh, forced to the surface. Scientists could see it was crystallised fat on the surface causing the bloom, but didn't fully understand how it got there until they got their hands on this X-ray machine, which allowed them to see, closer than ever before, how the fat travels through chocolate. This ring here is indicative of the fat before the fat migration, and when the fat migrates, this ring here, this structure, is gone, indicating you that the fat migrates to the surface. You can really see it clearly there, because on the first picture here, it looks quite contained, a, a exactly. large ring, but moving down here, it started to scatter out, hasn't it? Exactly. Studying how these white dots, the fat molecules, disperse means scientists are closer to solving one of the biggest causes of customer complaints. Bloom rejects cost the European chocolate industry millions of pounds a year. So when you find an old chocolate bar and it's got white dust on it, that's not mould. All that is is the fat that's locked in the chocolate coming out. Exactly, but you can still eat the chocolate bar. But it doesn't look very nice. So what can you do to stop your chocolate blooming? You can do a lot of things, and the experts in the chocolate companies are working on this. So they haven't cracked it yet, but they are working on the blooming problem. Exactly. Exactly.